is the time now, 17 minutes past 10, and as I said, I was expecting Rob Black, who is the, the Australian um, director of the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project, and I have Stephen Ramsden with me also this morning, who has come all the way from the US, and welcome to both of you boys. Good morning. Morning. Thank you for having us. Well, it's a pleasure. We've heard so much about you, Stephen. It's good to have you right here in the building. I am very, very excited to be in the Burdekin. Well, that's good. And have you been here before? No, no, ma'am, I have not. You haven't been this before? This is my first trip to Australia. Uh-huh. And we're all waiting to see the sun, and I've been peeking out of that curtain, <laughs> making sure that it was around, and I saw it a little while ago. It was there this morning. So I, I, um, we're hoping that. that it's there now while you're here. Mm. So tell me, Stephen... What prompted you, well before we go on to what prompted you to set up the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project, how about telling us why you called it after Charlie Bates? Uh, Charlie Bates was a veteran, I, I'm a um, US military veteran and Charlie Bates uh, was also a veteran of the military in the United States and he and I worked together for many many years as air traffic controllers in mm -hmm. Atlanta, Georgia so we were responsible for separating aircraft on takeoff and landing so Charlie Bates um, died in 2008 and a very dear friend so when that happened um, I took accounting of my life like most people do mm -hmm. when they get older and get more sense I took accounting of where I was in life and decided that I was no longer going to um, complain and, and, and do nothing while my country was having so many problems. I decided, my wife and I decided together that we were going to attempt to do something to help the educational system in the United States where I live because mm -hmm. it is not, not anywhere as, as good as, as some people may think and it has declined greatly in the last 20 to 30 years. Mm -hmm. So we decided to name the program in memoriam to Charlie because he was just a very friendly fellow and he meant a lot to me in my life mm -hmm. and um, we, we chose that name to honor his memory. Oh, well, that's beautiful. And um, then tell us about setting up the, um, setting up the um, group. You, um, you set it up originally in Atlanta, Georgia, is that right? Yes, ma'am. I started with one very small telescope in Atlanta and I chose solar astronomy because the sun is readily accessible to everybody. It's free. It's always there, uh, unless it's really cloudy. But it's something that was really, really easy for me to take science and knowledge to the general public. Mm -hmm. So I started by setting up a telescope on the corner where I lived mm -hmm. and people started coming up and asking me what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And that was a magical thing because, um, it, you know, people where I live are very concerned about money. They're always in a hurry. Uh, they're, they're rude. I, I hate to say that, but uh, Americans are, are obsessed with getting more things, having more money, doing things. Mm -hmm. They've lost a lot of their friendliness and they've become quite rude. Mm -hmm. So I found that if you put someone behind a telescope, all those things fall away. Mm -hmm. And that sense of wonder that everyone had when they were youngsters uh, in, the, in the year five or six, resurfaces all of a sudden and they want to know what they're looking at. This is really cool, I like this. So I saw that happening immediately and I, I determined that that was a very valuable thing to have. So I expanded the program and several teachers had stopped by my little corner setup and asked me if I could come to their school. Mm -hmm. The same way Rob Black he does it here in the Burger King. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It just spread by word of mouth. And the sun is something that I've always studied. Um, I, my educational background is mathematics and astrophysics. So I knew a lot about the sun already, mm -hmm. but when I set up the telescopes and saw the magic that it could spread to the public mm -hmm. and get people to think about something that really was meaningful, like the science and the natural world around them, that's when I decided I wanted to go bigger with the program mm -hmm. and take it to schools and get students interested in that too. So that's kind of how it started, and it was all word of mouth. We don't sell anything. We don't ask for anything. I don't do any of that. I just want to spread science because it, it, it's magical. Mm -hmm. It makes people think about other things besides the little problems that bring us down mm -hmm. in day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. And it also helps students to go a certain way in life. If you get a student, I found, in a sixth, seventh, or eighth year, and direct them towards science and learning something more about science, mm -hmm. it can change their entire life. Mm -hmm. sure, it can point them in a certain direction rather than the bad direction. And mm -hmm. in America, we have a phrase, uh, educate, now or incarcerate later mm -hmm. and it's something I go by and it's a little harsh I know for Australians but 
Well, it doesn't hurt us to hear that either, I can tell you. Um, I've, I've seen, in my travels this last few months, I've seen some troubling things in other countries um, with, with people that, and I love my country, don't get me wrong, mm -hmm. I served to protect my country, just like Australians love their country. Um, I've seen troubling things where the media in different countries has become more Americanized and concentrating on scandals or, mm -hmm. you know, political extremism. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. things will destroy your country. Mm -hmm. I do not want that to happen in other countries. Um, so I've decided to try to spread it as far as I can, and Rob Black found me on the Internet, and he's doing the same thing mm -hmm. I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And it turns out it's got a lot of great results for students and general public as well. And it's totally free. Uh, yes, that's the interesting piece, isn't it? Totally, you don't need to make totally money. Free. You know? And you're, you're um, well, in your heart, you're doing what you feel you want to do. And Absolutely. You know, people are beginning to follow what what you're doing. It's catching on. It's spreading like wildfire. Is that a phrase here? It's well, yes, it is. It, is. <laughs> it really is. And it, it turns out there's a lot of people that feel the same way that are just so turned off by the modern, the way things are going modern-wise on, on television and the reality shows and all the craziness on television. It turns off a lot of people. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of people out there that want to get involved in this because it reminds them of how of the dreams and the wonder they had as as youngsters and some people still have as as grown-ups like I do and I'm sure you do but it reignites that whole f uh, fantastic wonder about the universe mm -hmm. and when you get to look at these telescopes and you see this gigantic ball of hydrogen plasma just spewing these features off solar flares and solar prominences and sunspots and you realize you know this is what's important this is why our planet exists I mean this is the things I should be concerned about mm -hmm. and learn more about mm -hmm. and not worry about, you know, do I, do I, am I pretty or do I have nice clothes or, you know, those kind of silly That's things. That's right. They're, they're, they're not the real important things. They're not important life. at all. No, no. In fact, they're completely irrelevant. That's true. Um, <laughs> I was looking at your website yesterday where it's, it started off um, with the big sun and you called it your star, of course, mm -hmm. and then all the different um, pictures as I went right down. Unbelievable. <laughs> See, I've never looked through a telescope. Right, and a lot of people haven't, and that's no. amazing to me. No. No. Um, in, in the United States, when I was a youngster in the 70s, I was born in 1965, during the middle of the Apollo lunar landing program, mm -hmm. and you can remember that, and so can Rob Black. Yep. The entire world was engulfed by this, we're going to the moon. Mm. You know, it didn't matter yeah. who was going, that mm. we humans are going to the moon. That's right. And everybody wanted to be an astronaut. Everybody wanted to do this in their life. They wanted to get in and be a professor, an astronaut, a scientist. Mm -hmm. They wanted to have something to do with this new thing. Mm -hmm. And we haven't been back, unfortunately, in, in, in almost 50 years. And that has kind of fizzled out. You know, the, the whole wonder, we are an exploring species human beings mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if you're from australia nigeria america doesn't matter, doesn't doesn't matter. Same. we right. are explorers mm -hmm. and every great accomplishment in human history has been centered around a new level a new frontier of exploration everything mm -hmm. the new world the founding of australia uh, everything in history is centered around this exploration we don't explore anymore we're content with getting a new car getting that's, a new house that, that's exactly who cares about right. anybody else what's in it for me that's mm -hmm. what's going on in america right now mm -hmm. it pains me to see that so the wife and i decided my wife's an attorney in atlanta uh, we decided that we had way too much stuff number one we mm -hmm. lived in a big fancy house with fancy cars and money it doesn't matter so we decided we were going to take a significant portion of what we had turn it into something we could use to educate students in our community mm -hmm. and keep doing it as long as we could Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of what's happened in the last six and years. And you feel so much better, don't you? I cannot tell you how much better I feel. I had a lot of stuff. Uh, giving it away is a million times more fun than making it, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm not saying give away everything you own. But we, right. if you have enough to live comfortably, why do you need ten times the amount to live comfortably? That's exactly right. That's you know, you're already comfortable. Help someone else discover themselves and get to their full potential and let them be comfortable in, in life also. That's right. How, how do you find the young people? What what age group do you try to start them off? Um, it's, to me, the best age group in the United States. This may be different here. But in, I don't know what you call it here, but we have middle school in America, which is year five, six, and seven. Mm -hmm. Those students are bright enough to understand anything you tell them they can learn anything mm -hmm. languages science math they can they can soak it in like a sponge anything mm -hmm. but they're not in the high school years yet where they've already decided they're going to hang out with this group of kids or that group of kids and they're going to do this or that so they're still available to be turned down one road or the other 
So I try to focus all my efforts in America on fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. Now I just I just returned from a local high school, and I, I uh, Home Hill. Home Hill High. Yep. Home Hill High, and I I have to tell you, um, I don't want to run over time, but I have to tell you how incredibly impressed I was with the school. You you're not going to be running out of time because I've debated however long you want this morning. Oh, very good. So uh, <laughs> we take this opportunity of hearing exactly what you do because we're so proud to have discovered what you are doing through Rob. And Rob Black made this all happen. Um, I get a lot of a lot of Facebook uh, emails, and and I use social media. I have a yearly fundraiser on social media, and I use that to raise to raise some of the funds for the program. Um, in America, you have to have one third of your budget must come from someone besides yourself. Mm -hmm. So my wife and I pay for for two thirds of it, and then we raise public funds, and I do that through social media. So I get a lot of very strange emails and very strange uh, <laughs> messages on social media. You might imagine. I'm retired uh, military, and I'm also a retired air traffic controller in Atlanta. That's what I did for a living. Uh -huh. But my education was all in science. So I get all these emails about con chemtrails and conspiracy theories and all these all these crackpots, and it, it's funny sometimes. So I got this email from this big fuzzy face guy that looked like a <laughs> hobbit in Australia. <laughs> Thanks, bud. Yep. But, um, a hobbit. Yep. I'm just kidding. Um, but I got this strange email. I said, hey, uh, do you think you might want to come to Australia? And do some some solar astronomy, and I said, sure, sure, I'd love to. Uh, you know, I, I explained that I, it can't cost the nonprofit any money. You have to pay the cost to get me there, but I'd love to come and spend as much time as you want. And I thought that was the last I was going to hear of it because I get those requests all the time. <laughs> and uh, the next thing I know, Rob Bra Rob Black is calling, <laughs> and he's he's working out the details of this trip to Australia, which is fantastic. I couldn't believe it. So here, a little bit less than two years later, I'm sitting in your lovely radio station being interviewed by you so it's amazing amazing rob tell me have you been over there no you haven't no okay so you might get a reciprocal visit perhaps sometime oh, in the future. I don't know, maybe <laughs> <laughs> he's much more handsome than a hobbit by the way i was just kidding <laughs> well I, one thing i can say stephen um with you starting on the kids at that age hopefully it's before they get to be playing these games on on their Video games. You know? yeah. And as my husband says, every time he hears about, um, you know, somebody getting shot and all this sort of stuff, and Jim says, well, they learn to kill, kill, kill in all those games. That's exactly right. The American culture is completely consumed with electronic gadgets and games, and people uh, walk around the street and they look down at their phones, and that's all they look at. They don't look in the sky anymore. They don't look at the birds. They don't look at, mm. at trees. They don't look at anything except their video games or their, tel their cell phones. Well, just recently I was watching tennis in India mm. on pay television, mm -hmm. and there they all are with their phones Texting messages or whatever to each they other. had. Yeah. Nobody was watching the tennis except right. there. And they're sitting next to each other sending oh, text sure. messages to each other. They do. Um, I, I, when I lecture the students in the United States, I, I say, who, who likes to play video games? And everybody raises their hand, of course. And then I explain to them, the people that sold you those video games, what do you think they do all day long? Oh, I don't know. Well, they don't sit around playing video games. They're, they're computer coders and scientists who created these things to yes. sell to you. Yes. You are the consumer. Yes. They are making the money from these things and being successful because they learned how to do science and computer coding. They don't sit around playing video games all day. So if you would like to be nothing more than a consumer on a couch, <laughs> you're well on your way. Oh, gee, you're, you're, you're just so right. We might stop and have a little break for a minute. Certainly. And well, listeners, I hope you're enjoying my chat with Stephen Ramsden. And Stephen is with the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project. And Stephen, can I ask you now, do you think you've met the goals you laid out during the setup of the group? Well, I don't do a lot of talking about myself or bragging about what I've accomplished, but this group has spread like wildfire. It has become extremely popular, and my only goal uh, through the whole thing was, like Rob Black and I discussed, if I can get one student to go from being killed in a crime ten years later in life to being a successful scientist then the entire program is worth it so I would have to say yes the goals have been met but there's new students every year and it's so much fun to do this it's not hard work it's fun the, there's a phrase in America they say the payback is tenfold which uh, is really so true and I didn't know that until I started uh, thinking beyond my own nose and thinking about other people in the community 
Mm -hmm. And when you do give of yourself, it doesn't have to be money or, or any of that. It could just be time, compassion. You know, you care about someone. Just let someone know you care about them. When you do those things, the reward to you is much greater than any financial reward. But strangely enough, it, the financial reward is pretty good too because the whole program is pretty much supported by private donations. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever ask for anything. It's just people want to be involved in it because... I think a lot of it's got to do with the fact that we're not taking anyone's money, we're not selling anything, we don't copyright any images, anything like that. We just want to give away this incredible knowledge of the natural world. Mm -hmm. And it leads to so many other things that people just are, are drawn to it because they want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And it takes a special person to be an astronomer. Uh, you have to be specially nerdy. So is nerdy a word in Australia? Nerdy, nerdy, nerdy yeah. is a word, yes. Rob Black and I have the nerd part covered fully in this program, so we, uh, we are exceptionally nerdy. Um, but have I met the goals of the program? No. Uh, it's going to continue as long as my uh, bank account and my back will hold out. Uh, but it's so much fun, and I encourage anyone on, in the audience that's listening, if you have something you love to do that means something to you, and it's your secret thing that you like or that you, you find pleasure in studying or doing, music, reading, whatever it is, gardening, share it with someone else. That's, that's right. There are so many people that need that. You know, that can benefit from what you already take for granted that you've been given naturally. That's right. And if you share it with someone else, you can change your entire life. I did, I'm just trying to have a look because I've got quite a few notes here and I did put down somewhere how many young people or how many people perhaps you see in a year. Mm -hmm. Can you remember yourself? Yes, um, Americans are obsessed with numbers. So we have to have numbers to show what we're doing. Everybody has to prove what's what's valid. So there's a group called the NASA Smart Skies, I'm sorry, the NASA Night Skies Network in America that keeps track of all these outreach events. Mm -hmm. So we log all of our events. Um, in 2008, I saw about 49,000 students at the telescope. And that's me, that was the first year, and that's me taking the telescopes to schools and having students come up. I'm not talking about uh, just giving them a pamphlet and throwing them away. Mm -hmm. I mean, the students were in front of me, and I spoke to them and explained to them what they were seeing in the telescopes and gave them a lesson in science. And we started out about 50,000 a year for the first two or three years. And then the fourth year, something special happened, and that's when people started contacting me over the Internet. And I, started, I decided that instead of just buying all these glasses and all this equipment and using it just in my town, I was going to start giving away all the extra equipment because I got popular. And some companies decided to give us telescopes. And some people oh. decided to give us old telescopes. People started sending stuff to help the program. Oh, that's interesting. And it turned out I had more stuff than I needed. So I made a rule. Every time I got anything new donated or given, or if I bought something new, I would take whatever I was using before and give it to someone else. Mm -hmm. And that started this global thing. And I know I was taken advantage of a little bit by some, some parties, but most of the people involved... Uh, we're very grateful. They took the telescopes or the computers or the cameras. In fact, I sent some stuff to Rob Black mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years back. Um, they, they take this equipment and they create their own outreach program in their own community. And it just started spreading. Everybody wanted to get involved. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they, they look at me a little suspiciously at first, like, what's in it for you? What, what's your angle here? Mm -hmm. Until they realize and then you're they realize there's no the angle. Mm -hmm. My angle is the betterment of mankind, mm -hmm. which is something we should all be participating in. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the only angle I want. Yes, I'm going to make you work mm -hmm. with the equipment. But Stephen, really, we're talking about these thousands of, of well, we'll say children mm -hmm. that you're dealing with. You have no idea with the living arrangements that they have at home mm. and you don't realize where this education that you're giving them is taking them. No, I don't really realize it. Um, it's not important to me. I know that I'm given the opportunity and I'm, I will do anything for anyone to help them with anything. I'll give them the opportunity. Uh, what they do with the opportunity is up to them. Mm. And I stopped trying to keep track of it because uh, at first I gave away a couple of telescopes to people and one of the persons uh, took the telescope and sold it in the uh, local uh, internet site and mm -hmm. I gave this guy a really nice telescope to do his own outreach and like I say he ended up selling it in the newspaper and I was very very upset by that and my wife explained to me um, it's not important what they do with it it's what's important is that you give people the opportunity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I know that the, the majority of these kids are going to take this and get sparked by something and, and do something with their life um, if I can tell you a little story uh, we we spoke earlier about um, science, but w when I was a youngster in America, um, they can't see me on the radio, but I'm a very large person. I'm tall and very big. And uh, when I was in high school, 
the, the teachers there and the coaches just thought I was going to be good for football only, American football. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was going to do. Nobody gave me a second look. Uh, one teacher in the 10th year took the time to notice that I was also pretty bright and I was curious about science. And had that teacher not taken me aside and taught mm -hmm. me some special things and told me about chemistry, mm -hmm. um, my entire life would have been different. Okay, we went to Home Hill High School here a moment ago. There was a chemistry lab in there that was pretty much identical to the lab that that teacher took me in to teach me about chemistry. And it really made me feel very good to see that because um, that, that few minutes of that person's life given to me freely. They don't, they didn't care. He didn't care what I did with it. He just gave it to me because that's what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, completely changed my life. Mm -hmm. Okay, I could easily be dead or in jail. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wasn't because someone cared enough about me to teach me some science. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of one of the one of the uh, goals of the program is to just show these students that they are human beings. You recognize that they exist. You want them to do well, and here's how you do well. This mm -hmm. is what I love to do, young student. Come here and share it with me, mm -hmm. and then see what happens. Mm -hmm. And do you, feel, do you find they keep coming back to you for more? Um, yes. I've had a lot of email contacts later, um, and it really hasn't been going long enough. I'd like to say that, yes, one of my students became a Ph.D. rocket scientist at NASA, but I've only been doing it for six years, so I'm, I'm still waiting mm -hmm. on that. But again, um, it doesn't matter to me or not if I hear from the students later in life, because I know I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. And right now in America, um, no one wants to do anything for anyone else. It's all about what they can do for themselves only. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I'm doing something. I'm not curing cancer. I'm doing a small part as a citizen of my country to make things better mm -hmm. uh, and trying to spread that to other people. And when other people start doing it, it becomes a large movement. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, the country's better or That's the world's right. better. That's right. And would this be the largest group in the world that you have? This is by far the highest volume astronomy outreach program on Earth. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I did not expect that, believe me. Uh, <laughs> in, the, in the fourth and fifth year, when people started doing it internationally, uh, I was seeing about 80,000 students a year by then. And that's, that's while I was still working full-time. I just recently retired. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I have more time now. But it's well over a quarter million students a year that are personally, I'm not, and again, it's not a numbers thing. Uh, the most important thing is quality. That's right. Personal attention to these students at the eyepiece and showing them what is so cool about the sun. Mm -hmm. That's what's mm -hmm. important to me. If it was 10 students a year, I'd still feel just as good about it. Mm -hmm. But it's gotten over to a quarter million or so uh, students. And, and uh, it's, it's large. And I think it's spread, again, because it's just an honest, down-to-earth attempt at doing something to change the tide of extremism in the world and mm -hmm. get people back to knowing what's mm -hmm. important in life, which is education. That's education is the number one right. thing in that's life. That's right. Um, and do you go to other countries as well? Or only Well, we know you're coming to Australia, and we, we know you're <laughs> in the United States, but do you, you go elsewhere? Um, I have not taken a trip or vacation outside of the United States and, and uh, since I started the program because I'm too busy. I recently, well, retired. Yeah. I recently retired from my job as air traffic controller so I had plenty of extra time. So this summer starting at the beginning of May I've been on an airplane every week going somewhere um, and so this is my first around the world trip. Now, the last time I was going around the world, it was underwater in a submarine, so it wasn't quite as exciting. Oh, you were in a submarine. <laughs> yes, How yes, did you handle that? <laughs> well, I was 17 years old, and it was fantastic. I thought it was the greatest thing ever. Uh, I don't think I could handle it now at, at my size, but a guy the other night <laughs> said they'd need to, you'd need to be on a bigger boat. <laughs> oh, <dear laughs> but me. but um, oh, around the world, me. traveling is, is fun. But so, again, I'm, I'm here to work. I'm not, I'm, I'm not on a vacation. I'm here to, to try it's to spread a this in your holiday. country. It's a working it's holiday. It's a working holiday, working. yes. Yeah. Oh, you never know. Rob might take you fishing. You never know where he might I love to end fish. up taking you before he fish. lets you go home. Lots of secrets. Lots of, sec Lots secrets, of secrets about, Rob? about to happen, yep. Well, there you go, Stephen. You never know. <laughs> you never know what's well, going to happen. He's already made me very nervous about the uh, wildlife and the insect life here. So. Oh, no, the wildlife's okay. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah, oh, yes. He yeah, said if it moves, if it, moves it can kill you. Yeah. Anything okay. that looks at you, you should run because it'll kill you. <laughs> can we have another short break? Please. Well, listeners, I hope you're enjoying yourselves as much as I am. And I'm speaking, well, you're not hearing too much of Rob Black. <laughs> He's sitting here um, sort of, you know, not saying too much. But Stephen Ramsden, of course, is from the United States. And Stephen originally set up the Charlie Bates Solar Astronomy Project in Atlanta, Georgia. And Stephen, we're talking about science. 
science is a subject that has a stigma of being a geek subject <laughs> and not many are taking it. What's your view of that? Science is the Latin word for knowledge. It literally translates to knowledge. So uh, to gain knowledge uh, is not uh, just the, the uh, zone of geeks and nerds. But um, you, there are a lot of nerdy geeks in science. But you know, those nerdy geeks are also the ones that own the companies and that are hiring employees. Uh, I, I believe it to be a very, very worthwhile pursuit uh, for one's life. And again, uh, like I said earlier, the history of our species has been dedicated to scientific frontiers and exploration of science. And uh, you, you uh, but do you agree with that, Rob? Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I do. I think it's a great way to start out a student's life, mm. rather, rather than being involved in. Uh, trying to be a musical singer or a professional footballer or whatever those things can happen your chances of that being your life's success are about a billion to one mm -hmm. your chances of being successful with a well-based education in science and math are pretty much one to one i mean you're mm -hmm. almost guaranteed to be successful mm -hmm. if you educate yourself mm -hmm. uh... to the university level mm -hmm. you you would have to work hard not to be successful well, that's with true. education that's and true. no one can that's take true. it away from you No, and going back as i said to you i used to enjoy maths and today even i won't use a calculator mm. i always have to add things up in my head well you don't need one no. i mean math is the language of nature and mm. and if i can indulge rob black and i had this conversation before and i've had it a million times with people um we're born speaking mathematics innately and instinctually as a as an animal mm. we, we for me to shake your hand or to walk down the sidewalk requires complex mathematics to make that work with your muscles and your skeleton and your mm, body. Yeah, yeah. So everybody is born as a mathematician in my... They do it naturally without mm -hmm. even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you go to school you have to write down the method by which you're doing these equations. If you have a teacher that is... is if you have the wrong teacher they can make it seem like it's a drudgery or, or, or not if fun or exciting. But math is the language by which we describe nature. Mm -hmm. And uh, all the great mathematicians and great scientists in history, for instance, Isaac Newton, who was probably the greatest scientist in history, in my opinion, uh, made calculus to describe nature. Mm. He was perplexed and, and amazed by the things around him. Uh, the kookaburra that I saw yesterday in Rob Black's backyard, the uh, lorikeets, those things fascinate me. I love to look at them and study them, and, and I wonder why they're like they are, and why, why do they... Math is the language by which you relate that to other people. Mm -hmm. um, if I ask my students, I, and I do, uh, what's, what's 12 plus 4? Uh, and some student will finally, because I'm a big guy, I'm kind of intimidating, <laughs> but finally, finally a student will raise his hand and go, 16? And I'll say, that's correct. Now, what's 12 plus 4 on Jupiter, if you were standing on Jupiter? And they look at me, they think it's a trick question. Uh, <laughs> and then sometimes someone will say, uh, 16, Mr. Ramsden? Yes, that's correct. Math is the same everywhere. everywhere. In the yes. Andromeda Galaxy, all over the no place, everybody speaks it. It's already in you. Mm -hmm. And it's the key to science. Oh, Dave's just brought me in a message. <laughs> that's my daughter in Tasmania has just rung. Hello, to say Robin. She's listening. And so there you go. Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. <laughs> so, I think you're wow, too. <laughs> yes, you never know where people are listening today. So, tell me, what changes have you seen in the education system since you went to school? Now, there's a good... Ah, what do you reckon about that? Um, again, I'm, I'm a, a born American, and I've lived there all my life, and I came up in the southeast of America, which is um, not known for its educational standards. Uh, the state I live in is number 49 out of 50 in America for education and that's uh, graduation rates or grades or comprehension any test you can do for educational goals my state is always at the bottom of that test uh, we come from a very very hard-working labor state uh, not unlike the sugar mills and the things mm -hmm. I've learned here so far mm -hmm. the people that founded our state worked till they died they worked mm -hmm. themselves to death mm -hmm. harvesting cotton which was the uh, the crop that we had there mm -hmm. peanuts and cotton mm -hmm. very hard work mm -hmm. so the th their number one uh, uh, goal was not to get educated in the early years of our state but since then of course the world has changed and you have to have an education even to run this complex machinery or these, mm. these harvesting mm. devices you have to know science and math mm. so um, the education system in my state I can't speak for all of America but I can speak for what I've seen uh, it's terrible it's they no longer concentrate on practical application of anything there's no laboratories there's no free thinking 
or conceptualizing of things. It's all memorization of these facts mm -hmm. to pass a test. Uh, in America, they have a program where the schools get their funding from the from the federal government based mm -hmm. on the success rate of their students mm -hmm. on a particular test they give every year. Um, that is crazy because a student's success rate cannot be measured by a single test. You measure it by their lifetime exactly. of achievement. Mm -hmm. exactly. okay? And every Sorry. student doesn't think the same and doesn't pass tests the same. I was mm -hmm. very good with tests, but every student isn't. And some of the most brilliant people I've met are terrible at taking tests. Mm. Uh, I'll give you an example. Albert Einstein was horrible in school. Uh, and that's not just him. That's a cliche, I know. But mm -hmm. the, the system in America is, is completely uh, the, consumed by testing students all the time to see what they know, what they know. So that's turned into the teachers only teaching the answers to those tests. Mm -hmm. They don't know anymore. Uh, if I say, how many planets are there? Or, or, you know, the students can tell me a list of the planets in order. But then I, I asked them, well, why do they all orbit the sun? Well, I don't know. That's mm -hmm. not on the test. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, or or mm -hmm. the subject I teach is spectroscopy, which is the study of light. And I do it through solar astronomy. Light is the most fascinating thing in, I can think of. Mm -hmm. The fact that you can see me from that table and I can see you mm -hmm. is absolutely amazing. But it's the same exact science behind the light that allows you to see me that is allowing for this broadcast to be heard on radios across Australia and across the internet. It's called the electromagnetic spectrum. That is the basis of science, any science, chemistry, biology, any applied science is nothing more than a different way of getting and manipulating data from the electromagnetic spectrum. Mm -hmm. But if I teach a student to just memorize the names of the planets and not why they're there, how they got there, what's important about them, I might as well not teach them anything at all. Mm. because it's not giving them any benefit. They're not understanding how to conceptualize and understand uh, Isaac Newton, who sat and determined the laws of motion in his head by just using mathematics, the language of nature, and just looked up and saw, you know, that planet goes by. I see it every year do this, but sometimes it goes backwards and sometimes it goes forwards. I wonder why that is. And then for those guys to calculate that stuff in their brain, that search and thirst for knowledge has been replaced in America with a thirst and search for goods and mm -hmm. material possessions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can make money in America by doing uh, a lot of things, but uh, I guess what I'm saying is the education system there is no longer a, a exploration-based, conceptualization-based system. It's a memorization-based system, mm -hmm. and I would hate to see that spread any further, further. Mm -hmm. because it's, it's produced a dumber student a less likely to succeed student. That's right. Yeah. Uh, a student who barely understands anything about, if you ask them anything that wasn't in the textbook, they don't know anything about mm. what you're talking about. Mm. I, I can ask a hundred, we have a store there called Walmart, which mm, is a big, mm -hmm. big box retailer where your average person goes and buys stuff. If I went to the Walmart in my home state and asked uh, 100 people, how does the sun work? I would get 100 incorrect answers. I would not get a single correct answer, and I know that. Um, that to me is absolutely pathetic. It's, mm -hmm. it's embarrassing to me as a human being. I can just imagine uh, when you're teaching... How was that answer? Was that pretty good? That was yeah. pretty good. <laughs> that was excellent. Yes. I, I think... Um, well, we can change it, though. You know, when you're teaching these kids, the excitement that you're portraying, uh, getting through to me at the moment, <laughs> would make any kid want to learn. It's fascinating. The real science is way better. So you better. don't just stand there and say it like this. It's no. it, none of it's taught out of the book. No. No, it, it's, it's coming from... practical. I'm, yes. I'm, I'm just opening from within. people's eyes to the wonder that's already there. I'm that's, not anything special. That's I'm just, for sure. I've just taken the time to see it. I'll I mean, just, just tell you a little story. I have a niece that went to high school in Townsville, hmm. and she really wanted to be a nurse. And every time... A nurse, you said? A nurse, okay. yes. And every time the exams came, she failed. And when it was time to leave school, the headmistress decided she felt she would be a good nurse. Mm. So she contacted the matron at the, well, it was the matron at that stage at the Townsville Hospital, and said, I have this student that I think would make a good nurse, but she can't pass the exams. Would you be prepared to try her? Mm. So she took her and she went and learned her nursing in her classes at the hospital mm. and she sailed right through. Hands-on learning. Mm. It was the way it was being taught. Yeah, we're, we're, we're infatuated, not infatuated, we're, we're consumed and obsessed with testing uh, these days. And I, I can't speak for Australia, obviously, but in America, everything is a test. they got to test for this, test for that, test mm. for this. 
uh, a person's character and their ability to 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 succeed and benefit the community cannot be tested on a piece of paper. It's the it's the content of the character. The application. Right. Mm -hmm. So so uh, to finish that answer, our, our education system is not doing what it should be. It's not doing very well. Um, and again, just my my brief visit just this morning to the local high school in Home Hill. I uh, Rob can tell you, my jaw was on the ground the whole time just watching how they ran that school. It was absolutely fascinating. It was so much better than what I see mm. in my own country. It mm -hmm. reminded me of when I was in school in the 70s in America. So I hope that that's the way it is around Australia because uh, that gave me a lot of hope and, well, uh, and it made, gave me a very good, good feeling to see that. Mm -hmm. So you, you people are very fortunate to have that still here. Yeah. I think, don't throw I it think, away with I think media. over here it, we're pretty lucky it hasn't become streamlined. Uh, as much as what in what Stephen's been saying in America, because I, like I'm in complete and utter awe about what Stephen reckons or tells me about uh, what's going on in the schools over there. I'm, I'm completely blown away. You know, things like uh, students just simply paying attention, uh, things like that. It's well, yeah, that's, why, why aren't that's they? That's always a struggle. We we sat and watched uh, what 150 kids <laughs> sitting on the ground being polite, well-mannered, and paying attention to everything the principal said for 45 minutes. That would never occur in a public school in America. It would be impossible. Mm. And, uh, and again, I know this sounds like I'm, I'm, I'm speaking negatively about my country, and I'm not. I'm concerned mm. for what's going Genuinely on there. Genuinely concerned. And I'm trying to change it, because I want these students to have the same opportunities I had. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and, and I don't want to see uh, your country or any other country adopt any of the stuff we're doing over there because it's not working very well. Of course, we've got 420 million people to deal with, so it's a little different set of mm, requirements mm, mm -hmm. than Australia. Can I now ask you this question we talked about earlier in the piece? Getting back to science. Yep. Please do. And I don't understand a thing about this, <laughs> but I'm giving it to you because I have it sent to me. The advanced civilizations of the Egyptians and Aztecs recognized our connection to the sun. They understood the power of the sun and the effect it had on their bodies and the need for its energy to grow crops and to exist. They wore jewellery and built amazing buildings to pay homage and recognition to the sun. Why have we, in our called advanced society, in our so-called advanced society, lost this spiritual respect for our energy source? And do you think that by listening to the wisdom of ancient cultures, and learning from their past, we can once again reclaim this respect for ourselves and our planet and acknowledge that by eating crops grown naturally in the sun's light, we too are taking in that energy that is generated by the sun. A long question, Stephen. <laughs> One of my favorite topics, I uh, studied Mesoamerican uh, astronomy in, in college and it's always been a, a favorite topic of mine. Mesoamerican meaning uh, Incans, Mayans, uh, Central American cultures, uh, the Chinese and uh, the the Egyptians, the question about the Egyptians, the, the Egyptian society was the very first monotheistic society in the history of mankind, meaning they only had one god. And you got to remember, this isn't a theological discussion. Back in those days, uh, the god was just normal, and they, they, they had this theology uh, based on the sun, because the sun was the most important thing they could possibly imagine in their lives. And it still is today. Mm -hmm. uh, whether you want to call it science or religion or whatever, back then, the monotheistic nature of Egypt's uh, uh, worship of Ra, the sun god, was based on a lot of scientific knowledge because they knew they could not live without it. They knew the crops, their survival was completely based on the sun's cycles and understanding them and how to, how to, how to use them to make better crops. So if you can imagine, even back to Neanderthals or Cro-Magnon men in France, um, waking up and seeing this enormous ball of fire come over the horizon every morning, uh, that's not lost on me. That I still see it today. Uh, it's it's incredible. It's a star that's just floating out there in space, and we are on this little rock going around it. And th that star is completely responsible for everything that has ever happened on this world or ever will happen. Everything that lives on this planet is 100 percent. It's it's from the sun. It controls everything. The weather, mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she asked, you know, the, the spiritual relationship with the sun. That's, that's up to the individual, but I seek the spiritual clarity through studying science. Mm -hmm. And I think that's always been the case. They, back in the old days, science was their, I mean, religion was their form of science. Uh, it, it doesn't matter to me about the, the religious aspect of it, but the spirituality of the sun is unmistakable if you take the time and appreciate it and just know that it's, it's there and look at it. Mm -hmm. And you, you talk about... Uh, 
that was part of the question that reminded me today on on t-shirts uh or on television ads when you're when you're walking around my city in atlanta you see some, uh, justin bieber mm -hmm. you know justin bieber is worshiped now as a spiritual being well i can tell you justin bieber is not going to make your corn grow <laughs> um, <laughs> no you're just, so, just jolly right there but that's a very good question i appreciate it uh the mesoamericans the chinese and and the uh, egyptians um all also noted especially the chinese four thousand years before europeans they knew about sunspots on the sun because they could look at them at the setting sun or the rising sun if there was a thin layer of clouds they could look at the sun and see blemishes on it and these things were recorded in chinese history and also in mayan history uh... the mayans were the world's greatest astronomers three thousand years before galileo but you know as europeans we like to take credit for everything but uh, these people already had an understanding of all this thousands of years before we did and uh, you call them ancient cultures uh, they were not dumb cultures they were just in a different part of time those those uh, the the people in china and the people in the mesoamerican cultures were incredibly intelligent and even the persians who developed mathematics and the arabic writing form there's all kind of stuff to learn from that and it can't it cannot be discarded you know with the arrogance of the modern age where we think mm -hmm. that we know everything and there's mm -hmm. nothing to learn mm -hmm. It's completely untrue. Uh, mm -hmm. you, can, you can learn a lot from studying the ancients and the way they treated the sun. Thank you very much for answering that. A little long-winded, I tried. It doesn't matter. <laughs> because the person Whoever wrote that email should come to our event and I could talk to you for hours on that subject. Well, not, not from the Burdekin, which is a shame. Oh. Well, they got airplanes, right? Um, <laughs> what else have I got down, written down here? Rob, tell me this. On Wednesday, when you're going to be outside here, are there going to be any opportunities that we could get Stephen back in here for a little bit, or do you think he'll be totally tied up? Absolutely. No, I can come in. There'll be all chance of him coming back inside and doing little spiels and all that. Well, I think it would be, would be great if you're happy to do sure. that. Sure, I'd, I'd love to. to. Get me out of the hot air for a little while, sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because, you know, he hasn't got much hair or anything like that on his head, so... Yes, no. I am quite ugly. No. Yeah. Well, make sure you get him a, what do you call those hats that Bob Catter wears? Oh, yeah, yep, yep. Get him one of those, you reckon? <laughs> get him one of those to keep, uh, keep the... Well, with, when the clouds, uh, if the clouds cooperate, which I'm sure they will, uh, people, they, that, people that come by will be able I'm to... I'm to, uh, They'll be able to see the sun in a way that... This is, this is not just a white ball. Uh, you're seeing the sun in, in what's called narrow band wavelengths of astronomy. So you're taking the sun's spectrum. Is this okay now to talk about that? Yes. You're taking the light from the sun and uh, the continuous spectrum that you learn in school, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, they call it Roy G. Biv in America. Um, we're just going to look at a tiny, tiny, tiny slice of the red by itself and also a tiny slice of the purple by itself. And when you do that, you're blocking out the rest of the colors so you can see details on the surface of the sun and also in the atmosphere of the sun. So you'll see solar prominences and sunspots and magnetic activity in the atmosphere of the sun so it's a big bright red image with stuff shooting off the sides it's interesting to look at the science behind it is is absolutely fascinating and that's where the spectroscopic aspect of this comes in but it's also easy enough for anybody to come up and look at it and go wow that's really cool so like the first time that rob black or you or, or you said you haven't looked through a telescope no, i'm going to change no. that for you here shortly but the first time you see saturn through a telescope um, a lot of people's lives are changed by it because it makes them realize uh, their place in the solar system in the universe uh, the sun is like that every day and every time you look at it it's different because it's changing so fast so if you do get a chance to come by here we're going to look at the sun in three different wavelengths of light uh, it's all totally safe and everybody who comes by will get free giveaways that I brought from America and we'll have solar glasses to give to everybody and it's, it's all free of charge and the whole point here is to spread science and spread awareness of the fact that this stuff is important mm -hmm. you know put down the football scores for today uh, just give it a rest for a little while you know lay off mm -hmm. lay off mm -hmm. the beer for a couple hours and just come in and enjoy some science mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and see what's going on in the world around well you. I'm hoping the fact that we're right on the highway and this is the highway that will mm -hmm. bring you from Melbourne right through to the top of Australia the one right? is it called yeah. yeah I'm just hoping that there will be a lot of people that will p pull up um, mm -hmm. And we are announcing it, and I'm hoping that the locals will be telling friends or foe, whoever are arriving in the place, um, to make sure that they stop. I'd love to see as many people as want to come out. And again, if it's just one person that shows up, that's fine with me too, because I would just love what I do, and uh, Rob Black loves what he's doing, and I think it shows, and anybody that comes up will get that sense. 
and uh, you'll enjoy the day. And it's something nice to bring the kids to watch too. It's well, very that's, incredible. That's for sure. Yes, and um, we will be announcing it that. Um, the different places that you will be going. Rob will keep me up to date with uh, um, the list that I've got is up to date. And um, we're just hoping that um, the parents will go along to the schools where it is yeah, a closed event. Kid, it's not a kid science. It's not a kid event. It's it, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. Um, yes. It's really the best for about eight years and up. But mm -hmm. if you're an adult, uh, this is also an extremely interesting thing to do. Uh, solar astronomy is a great hobby that can be done in the daytime and you and your kid or you and your friend can go do it. You can throw it in a backpack and, and go uh, hiking with it mm. or whatever you call it in Australia. Mm. You can take it out into the outback and, and have a solar telescope with you. It's just very interesting. It's a really cool way to spend your time mm. and it's mm -hmm. very interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, Not to mention that it's also a great science to teach students. Well for someone that had no idea about all of this, you've mm. certainly got me excited. It's very interesting. <laughs> yes, and as I say, I love science, but no, we weren't taught anything like this. It didn't exist when you and I were in school. No, this hobby's no. only been around for no. about seven, well, about ten years on a consumer level. Mm -hmm. And the person that uh, invented the the, the hobby, uh, David Lunt, is deceased now. But his son Andy, who owns the Lunt Solar Systems, which is the largest solar manufacturer in the world. He's a good friend of mine, and he's going to come in a, about eight more days, ten oh, more days. Lovely. And mm -hmm. he's going to spend a week here, too, in the Burdekin. Oh, so sure you'll have mm -hmm. the world's foremost authority on solar astronomy, me, and uh, you'll have the world's foremost authority on manufacturing solar telescopes, Andy Lunt. Mm -hmm. And then we have a guy from NASA who's coming to join us, too. He's the media relations director mm -hmm. for the NASA, the entire solar program at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. Mm -hmm. He'll be joining us also this month. So we're going to turn this... Uh, little sleepy quaint town of yours into the mecca for solar astronomy in Australia Terrific. with the most well, advanced stuff I there think is. Rob, as these people arrive, we better have them in as well. What do you reckon? I reckon so too. Very good <laughs> idea. You know, it's Very not, good idea. It's not that we get this opportunity all the time and we, we need our listeners to hear exactly what you have to say. Well, I appreciate you saying that. It's really, it's really our honor to be here because um, you know, I, I am well known in America and, and I do a lot of lectures and all that kind of stuff, but none of that stuff really matters to me. What matters to me is people that care about what I'm doing and can see the importance of it. And that's certainly, I, I see that in your eyes and your, your questions. So and it's really my honor to be here with you. You're doing it for love. Absolutely. There's and nothing in it for us. And it's that's what I'm doing totally here. It. No pay here. Well, I'd it's have to disagree with love. that because you may not be getting paid, but what you're getting back for it. And I feel guilty sometimes because I get so much more out of it than the students. Oh, that's for sure. I'm yes, getting uh, contentment and, 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 and life fulfillment, which cannot be bought at any price. That's right. And I've searched for it for years, but this is where it's at. This, for me, this is you know sharing my passion with other people for science is where well, it's at right. for me. That's right. You're doing the same thing for your community as what we're doing here, trying to promote the community and anybody that pops along. I mean, this is a great had, little town. It's very we've interesting. We've had a, a man that was riding around Australia raising money for diabetes. And mm. we saw him on his bike outside. So what do we do? We brought him in here. Mm. And and so people along the road would know he's coming. Mm. And this sort mm. of, you know, that's what we're here for. Mm. There's a lot of charm in this town. There's a lot of friendliness and a lot of hospitality that I've seen already. Mm -hmm. It's very impressive to me. Mm -hmm. My wife's going to love it. My wife's also coming in, in a couple of weeks. Well, so, we might uh, be have it, able to have your wife in as well. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here, definitely here every Wednesday, so okay. um, I'm, I'm personally happy to uh, to do that. Rob, is there anything else you would like to do now? Oh, I'd just like to say to all the listeners out there, make sure you do come around uh, on Wednesday to the out the front of Sweet FM, and uh, you can be in absolute utter awe of the sun and the power of the sun and just... You can be in awe of just sitting right next door to Stephen Ramson. Hang out with us for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Rob Black before we finish, though. Oh, that's, that's all right. Oh, this is interesting. Yeah. Rob, what on earth got into you to think that you could bring three of the world's greatest solar astronomer people to the town of Burdekin or the town of Home Hill and make this all happen? Were you drinking at the time? No, no. <laughs> quite sober, quite sober. I just thought, why not? Yeah, nobody had ever done it before. And, it's a case, um, Rob, isn't it? If yeah. you don't ask, you don't receive. That's it. And I thought, well, what's worse you can say? No. And uh, I so put it forward to him, and he probably thought I was absolutely nuts. But no, uh, I just thought, why not? Why not put it into into action? Because 
a lot of people know when I get an idea in my head, I don't usually let go of it. <laughs> if it's if it's possible to do, if mm -hmm. I can see it's possible to do, people um, realise that, you know, he'll eventually get it done. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Is that common among uh, Australians? Is that part of the spirit of Australia? I think it's the, uh, the down-to-earth, like, heads down, bum up type attitude, mm -hmm. you know, instead of whinging about it, just get down and do it, you know, get it done. I found it very, very impressive. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> well, Stephen... In all the things that I read, I, I read about you, um, where you'll go anywhere, uh, how long your lectures go, mm -hmm. if the flight is less than three hours and economy fare is fine, well, you're not charging us that for it here. No. And all the different things that you do for love and for free. Um, what did I read somewhere? I wish I could find the exact piece I'm looking <laughs> for, um, but I can't find it. But... Well, there's nothing special about what I'm doing. It's it's, you, it's The thing is, I'm trying to find is what you said. You don't want to be classed as a whatever. What was it? I'm not sure. But it was on one of these pieces of paper, and I, I could see that you were doing what you're doing for love. Well, every single person that's listening to this show can do exactly the same thing. It's not difficult. It's just a matter of shedding away all this, the crazy things of the modern world that prevent us from being nice to each other and, and just get rid of them and start being nice to each other and start sharing what you love with other people. When I was growing up, that's what everyone did. I'm trying to bring that back. Well, yes, and, and uh, when I was young too, that was the way we worked. Well, let's take it back to, to that. Let's take some of those values from those days and, and bring them back and see if they can turn around what's happening nowadays. Be great it's to a have simple you thing. here. It's a simple thing. Really great <laughs> to have you. I look forward to it. Rob knows that. Oh, I must from the do. day that <laughs> I, he asked me about bringing you in here. <laughs> I was just so thrilled, and um, I haven't been disappointed, I can tell you. Well, thank you very much for having me. It's been my honour to speak And with you're you. welcome to come back. Yes, ma'am. For the length of time that you're here, Rob, make sure you don't let him pass. Oh, I won't. <laughs> I won't. I'm driving him around at the moment, so... Oh, right, eh? Yeah, he's a captive audience. That's great. Yeah, and you guys are on the wrong side of the road, if you haven't uh, noticed no, that we're yet. On so it's terrifying me to ride around with Rob Black. I'm, I'd <laughs> like to have some blinders, if I could. Listen, there's, a, there's an ad on TV of a... I can't remember which brand of, of a car it is, and they're selling them in Australia, but on the ad, it's driven on the wrong side of the road. Oh, yeah. No, you mean the right side of the road. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> yeah. We could go on like this for hours, couldn't we? You we know, could, wrong yes. side, right side, the correct side. We're on the correct side of the road. Now. Okay. Well, yeah. when in Rome, do as the do Romans, as the Romans do. Oh, yes, yes. yes do, mm -hmm. Make sure you do that. I don't but know, I Rob, where you've got any of those. Mm. Sorry. Which the tourist ones? information books? Yes, yeah, Stephen's got one. Yeah. You got yep. one? Yep. Oh, right, oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did eat two large tablespoons of Vegemite in preparation for coming here, and I can tell you, no offense, but I will never eat another tablespoon of Vegemite. Mm. Did mm. you decide you didn't like it? Um, it was decided well before I made that decision. I think I think the people who made oh, Vegemite right, right. had already decided. But listen, <laughs> um, they're also making peanut butter ice cream in Australia now. I'll take it. Now that's something I can eat two large teaspoons of. Let's go oh, get that. Peanut butter, peanut butter ice cream. Peanut butter ice cream. Fantastic. I think, it's, uh, I think it happens to be cold that's selling it. Hmm. Is, do they have bacon flavored ice cream yet? No, I haven't, <laughs> haven't come across that. I haven't come across that. Fantastic. So are you Thanks taking again. Stephen across the road? Yeah, we'll take him over, meet him, uh, introduce him to the Phil at the at the Malpas Hotel. Mm -hmm. Go down to a few other businesses and then go and do an equipment test later in the afternoon. Uh -huh. and make sure everything's operational. Okay. So you're happy with what you've had this morning? Totally. All right. Absolutely. Come on, okay. see you, us. you might not have heard much from me. I've just been sitting here in absolute awe that Stephen is actually physically here. <laughs> it sort of really hasn't hit home yet. It will. But, yeah, it's sort of like when, you know, like when you see a god walking down the street, you Come just on, go, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Far from that. Uh, no, I don't know. Well, remember, Wednesday, I'm here, and we'll get you in here if it's possible. Okay, very good. All right. And thanks for the interview, and thanks for, uh, for the listeners paying attention. I appreciate you. Well, I'm sure the listeners have enjoyed it, and um, we want them all to be here on Wednesday morning to meet you and to see what you can show them. And free T-shirts and hats, too. Free T-shirts and hats. Well, there <laughs> you go. Okay, well, thank you both very, very much. And um, we'll...
we'll finish up with, oh, what will we have? Damien Leith and Sunshine on my shoulders. So you might get that this afternoon. One of my favourites.